Hello everyone, you are welcome to the fourth episode of the Manual Reinforced Concrete Design using RCC Design Excel Spreadsheet. In this episode, I will be showing you how you can design a two-way slab, okay? So I'll show you how you can design a two-way slab using the RCC template. And the spreadsheet we'll be using in this case is RCC 11, okay? So if you check the list of the spreadsheet that you have over here, basically there are two spreadsheet that you can use for the design of the uh, of the two-way slab you can either use the rcc 11 which is the elements design okay or you can use the um rcc 94 you can see it here two-way slab okay but that is the table version in the last video i showed you how you can use the table version to calculate the one way so either you are using the um, the table version or you are using the actual version you should know how you can use the two they are almost the same thing you just need to fill in your figures okay so it's just like you having two options all right so anyone you wish to use you are fine it's fine okay so um i'm using rcc 11 in this case so in order to make it uh more practical i have decided to you know to have a question so this is the question that i just prepared um let me try to zoom it a little bit okay so that it can be very visible so I decided to create this question and then we can just use it as the exercise. So in the question, I said, you should design a simply supported two-way slab of panel dimension as shown below. That is, this is the dimension of the panel. Take the total dead load as 6.5 kN per meter, per meter run, okay? And then you should take the live load as 1.5 kN per meter, per meter run, okay? Then you should use Y12 for your reinforcement and you should take a cover of 20 millimeter, okay? And then you should consider that the slab is not below 150 mm thick. That is the least thickness of slab I wish for you to use is 150 mm. But if 150 mm does not pass the deflection, then maybe you have to increase, okay? But I don't want it to be lesser than 150 mm. So use concrete grade as 30 newton per mm squared and use a steel grade of 410 newton per mm squared okay so the first thing we need to do in the question it has been stated that it is a two-way slab but you still need to cons you, you need to calculate the aspect ratio to know if it is a two-way slab okay and aspect ratio is basically the long span over the short span so this is giving me 1.5 that is less than two and that will make me to consider this slab as a two-way slab okay Another reason for calculating the aspect ratio is that you need it for you to distribute your moment across the span because this is a two-way slab. You cannot just calculate the moment of a two-way slab the way you calculate the moment of a one-way slab. Had it been this is a one-way slab, that means there will be no moment distributed in the short span, just the long span. Sorry, there will be no moment distributed in the long span, just the short span will be having moment, okay? And then the moments can easily be determined if it is um, a, a one-way slab, the moment can just be determined from the formula. There'll be a square over it. If it is, you know, fixed, fixed, then you know that the augie moment will be W square over 12 and the saggy moment will be W square over 24, okay? So you can easily determine that if it is a one-way slab. But considering that it is a two-way slab, you know, there's moment distributed in the short span and there's moment distributed in the long span. So you need to distribute the moment accordingly, all right? So, um... The aspect ratio has been calculated to be 1.5. This is unitless. It, it does not have any unit because meter will cancel meter. Then the next thing to do is to calculate the design load. All right, design load. So the actual dead load has been computed to be 6.5. You should know how you can compute this manually. You just need to get your the dead load of your slab, the finishes, the partitions, the you know screening or whatever. Then you calculate everything. That will give you 6.5. And then for... For a residential building, we've been told to use um, 1.5 kN per, per meter squared. That's according to BS6399, okay? So if you check BS6399, what you are supposed to use for your, um, your residential building is 1.5. So putting that in consideration, we are using this um, 1.4 GK plus 1.6 QK. That is my load combination. Basically, that's the load combination for um, BS8010, considering the ultimate limit state, okay? So, if you are considering the service limit state, then this can just be 1.0 GK, 1.6 QK, you know, considering that, yeah, there's not. So, um, 
just moving forward you just need to make the um, no simple multiplication and addition then the total answer we had up to 11.5 kN per meter per meter run okay and then having the the design load then we can calculate the moments so we need to calculate the moments in the long span because knowing that in this long span we have reinforcement right and then also in this short span we have reinforcement so we need to know the moments that will result in giving that reinforcement so let's calculate the moments for the short span and also the moments in the long span okay so in order to do that first of all you need to determine your boundary um your boundary factor okay so that can be seen in table 3.14 of bsc 110 so um for the short span i got 0 0.092 and for the long span, I got 0 0.056, okay? But in order not to make it confusing, I want to make this as simplified as possible. So I'll have to show you the table. In order to check the table, you need to get the aspect ratio. Make sure you have it at the back of your mind. So that is 1.5, right? So let's check the table. Okay, fine. This is table 3.14. And then you can see the bending moment coefficient. So we want to establish the bending moment coefficient for a rectangular panel supported on four sides, okay? Um, sorry, let's see. What is the condition of this slab? It says that um, it is simply supported. So if your slab is simply supported, that means it is discontinuous at all sides, right? So we are going to use that discontinuity against the aspect ratio. So um, checking that. Now you have to check this. So you pick this last one. That's four edges discontinuous, all right? Then you check your aspect ratio. What's your aspect ratio? This is my aspect ratio. My aspect ratio is 1.5. So tracing this down, okay? So if you trace this down, okay? So you see this is the answer, 0 0.092, okay? And that is how we arrived at this um, 0 0.092, okay? So for the long span, you know, we have to calculate the, um, what's it called? We need to determine the bending moment coefficient also in this long span. So we are going to apply the same um, the same principle, okay? So in this case, we don't even need the aspect ratio. You can see the aspect ratio is not essential on this side. So the only thing that is essential is the edge condition. So the edge condition is what? 0 0.056, okay? So this last column is for the long span, while all this is for the short span. So it's 0 0.056. So computing that here we have 0 0.056. So having this, now we can determine the moment. So we only need this to determine the moment. So applying this formula, then the moment in the short span will be equivalent to 9.52 kN meter. And then the moment in the long span will be equivalent to 5.8 kN meter. Okay. So we just need the moment. Then you have to, you know, do the design. So having this, let's move back to the, uh, to the templates. So I think we can now go ahead and design. So I believe that should be um, easy now. As I said earlier, anything in blue color is changeable, okay? So the, the name here, so um, you can just click on the name or you just change it from here. So it says um, DD whatever. So I'll just say, okay, simply supported. That's the name, you know. It's just a name. So I'll give it the name simply supported two-way slab. Okay, so that's the name I want to give to it. Okay, so you can see it's simply supported to a slab. So that's fine. Now the moment. Okay, so let's first of all design the short side. Okay, the short span. Okay, so we are designing the short span first. So what's the moment in the short span? The moment in the short span is 9.52. Okay, 9.52. So um, you change this to um, 9. 0.52 okay because this is a two-way slab and then the um the moment redistribution factor i'll just leave that as 1.0 then the span what's the span the span is three meter okay from there the short span okay then the thickness of the slab the thickness i said you should use um, something of 150 mm in the question it has been stated that you should use a bar of 12 mm and then the cover of 20 mm we are told to use grade concrete of 25 and then for steel we are told to use is it 410 or 460 let's confirm okay 410 so i'll use 410 okay then the partial factor safety uh, for the concrete let that be 1.5 and for steel let that be 1.05 okay so here the location you can either choose it to be simply supported if it is a continuous or if it is um you know having a support at two ends or if it is um a cantilever slab okay so you have to check that so i'll 
put that there as simply supported. So if that is fine, then your output is here as simple as that. So automatically, it will calculate the effective depth. It will calculate the um, the stiffness factor. And you know why the stiffness factor is essential? Because you need to know if your slab will be designed as singly reinforced or doubly reinforced. So you see that our K, our stiffness is 0 0.0025 and that is less than 0 0.156. That tells me that I have to just, you know, consider the tension reinforcement. So there's no need for um, compression reinforcement. So design it as singly reinforced, okay? Another way of doing this is you can just calculate the moment capacity and then you can you confirm it with your um, design moment, which is 9.5. So whichever is greater, you will know. But you can also use this stiffness pattern. This stiffness, I think, is more, um, is more popular. Then you calculate your lever arm and according to bs 810 it says that your lever arm should not be greater than 0 0.95 of your effective depth so even if um your lever arm is greater than 0 0.95 you have to take 0 0.95 so calculating that we have 117 and then your area of steel required the area of steel provided then you calculated the as minimum so then it's provided y12 at a spacing of 300 okay and then um the service stress now it wants to you know do the check so um the service stress is equivalent to 150 and then the modification factor we have two okay and then um at the end of the day it's calculated the um permissible depth okay so that's the basic span depth ratio and this is a simply supported beam so you should know that the basic span depth ratio is actually 20 if it is a continuous slab that's 26 and if it is a cantilever that's 7 okay so you can see 20 multiplied by the modification factor then you have this and then what is your actual span depth ratio that is equivalent to whatever then at the end of the day when you make the comparison you see that um it is okay so it is lesser so you see that it is okay so the deflection is fine and then we've taken care of the moment so this is your result basically so you can also come here to check everything so you see your effective depth is this your AES required the AES minimum and then the years provided you know everything that i need to check here you can easily um, go ahead and check it and you can see that it is okay okay so that's fine so it means that in the short span i just need to provide what i need to provide y12 at a spacing of 300 mm that's the reinforcement i need to do also if i want to design for the long span you just need to change the moment okay so what's the moment there you need to change the moment the moment for the long span in this case will now be 5.8 okay so let's change that to here yeah, you change this to 5.8 that's not the only thing to change you also need to change the span okay the span the long span that will now be 4.5 because we are considering a different span right now so i think that's the only thing you need to change then that's fine then you come here and check so what's your as provided does you provide r12 at the same spacing still the same spacing and your deflection is also okay so that is everything so you can see the deflection is okay the maximum spacing is okay and then the minimum spacing is also satisfied um you will see that there is no compression required in this reinforcement there's no compression reinforcement because it is singly reinforced but let's assume that you just want to use doubly reinforced by fire by force you know maybe that is your company standard so you can just come here and then provide um you know a compression steel so if you don't want to provide a compression steel you can just put none okay but if you want to put a nominal you know just put nominal so by default it will just provide a nominal reinforcement for you so i think um that is satisfied also for the checking of your steel okay so there is a template for that let me show you there's um rcc workbook yes rcc workbook rc workbook so all this will be sent to you if you request for the um express um what's it called for the spreadsheet so area of steel if you click on this you can either click on this or you click on the bottom so let's see if you click on area so you see this is the steel table okay so you can easily check for the number of steel for the spacing whatever so the the spacing is here also for the beam link everything the lapping the bends the reinforcement you can always check this too you know this is your steel table in one word so this will be the end of the of this um, episode four in the next episode we will move further and we will dive into beam analysis and design then we will move further one more time so if you like the video make sure you give it a like 
and if you have not subscribed to my youtube channel yet consider giving me a subscription thank you for watching